Now, from the downtown of Northwest Arkansas, in Uptown Rogers, with weather from Bentonville to Fayetteville, Fort Smith and beyond, here's Oz Weather Meteorologist, Garrett Lewis. There, hope you had a very happy Easter with those you love. Temperatures outside today have been mild and Let's face it, we've had a lot more cloud cover than you and I expected this weekend. There's a lot of stratus clouds that are out there. That's going to continue to be the case for the overnight and tomorrow, leading to some warm overnight lows. The main event, though, is going to be our chance for strong to severe thunderstorms tomorrow evening, Monday evening. Right now, the data continues to trend towards after dark. We're looking closer to, if I had to put a big time frame on it, I'd say around 9 o'clock in the evening to about 1 in the morning with a bullseye probably somewhere around 10 or 11. I'm thinking that's the time to watch for the strongest storms. Will there be a tornado risk? Sure. But the biggest risk is going to be the hail risk, similar to last time. You have a lot of cold air aloft, and when you have that cold air aloft, that warm air accelerates through it very fast, which usually leads to some pretty chunky hail, usually two inches or larger in many areas. I'll show you that risk area. So that's the first big weather story. The second is the possibility of another frost or freeze. Now, the more I look into the data today, Tuesday night, I think probably doesn't happen. Wednesday night, though? It's going to depend on the clouds and the wind. We may get a light freeze across the area heading into the day coming up on um, Thursday morning would be the time to watch. So it'll be Wednesday night and Thursday morning. The big story after that, the weekend system. That one could cause some problems for us as we head into the big eclipse day early next week. So there's a lot on the weather horizon. Let's get to it and see what it looks like out there. Looking live out towards Uptown Rogers, uh, northbound there from, uh, I believe that's Bellevue overpass, looking uh, towards uh, the Hunt Towers and Top Golf. Over, see what I mean by these clouds? Man, they've been thick throughout the day today. That cloud cover continues to be thick and uh, will continue for uh, not only uh, for tonight and tomorrow, but also for Tuesday. I think the front moves through Tuesday morning. We may even have a couple of showers early in the day on Tuesday with some small hail with it as the front finally makes its way all the way through the area. So that's what it looks like now. What's it look like as far as the satellite radar goes? Well, uh, right now we do have some cloud cover that's out there uh, in uh, northwest Arkansas. Duh, right? We just saw it on the camera. Is there any clear skies? Not really. If we pull on out and zoom out a little bit more, you can see that thick cloud cover across most of the south central plains notice the uh, warm front that's to our north that warm front to the north is one of the reasons why we warmed up so much today and why we have so much thick humidity out there the low pressure system that's going to move through if we move out west you can see this spin right in here a counterclockwise swirl I'll move it over a little bit more here uh, you can see the cloud cover spinning that's the low pressure system that's going to jog across the central plains and give us that chance for strong to severe thunderstorms so it's a messy afternoon and evening across the southern plains and across most of the united states now, the severe weather threat, this is the area to watch for severe weather on Monday. Notice we're in an enhanced, that's a three on a scale of one to five. So we're right in the middle. It's stronger than most. It is for most of northwestern Arkansas, starting around Fort Smith, going north through Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, Bella Vista, Pea Ridge, all under that enhanced risk. But I'll take you one step farther and look at the hail risk, because this is where I think the hail is going to be the bigger issue or the biggest severe weather risk. That mostly includes Benton County and parts of Washington County. Not so much so for Clarksville for this one, or even for Mena or Hot Springs. This is mostly Benton County and Western Washington County under the higher risk. The hatched area, the little squiggly lines that you see, the dark lines on there, dashed lines, um, that indicates where the Storm Prediction Center thinks we could see significant hail. So that's two inches or larger, golf ball size hail or larger. If you remember the last event, that's what we saw with some of the stronger storms. Yes, there's a wind damage risk. Yes, there's a tornado risk. Um, and we can't discount those. But I think the hail is going to be the biggest thing to watch. So when does this whole thing get here? Well, tomorrow morning, warm air is going to be on the increase. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a spotty shower early in the day. But I think the best chance of that is probably closer to Tulsa. For us, the main show is the evening. Now, this is the North American model, the high-resolution model that came down this afternoon. And the timing on this is putting it close to about 10, 11 o'clock when it starts to move into the area. And then it moves out later in the evening. You can see that line lined up north to south. Any supercells on that, on or ahead of it, will have a higher tornado risk. One of the things that we're lacking in the low levels of the atmosphere is that turning with height. where You have to have wind shear, which is not only a change in speed, but also a change in direction with height. So you need those south winds and those northwest winds aloft to get that tube of air spinning 
and then that updraft will lift the tube, and then that gets what gives us the tornado risk. So we don't really have those backing winds at the surface. Now, some deviant motion with the storms, if one storm moves in a, in a different direction, well, that's going to be one to watch, a right turner or one that moves southeast, and any kind of boundary interactions. Let's say we do get a storm or a shower tomorrow morning. No big deal, right? Well, if it leaves a boundary and a storm moves over that boundary, it can increase that low-level helicity and, or that low-level wind shear and also give us a chance, a little bit of a higher risk of rotating storm. So it's not zero. It's just not very favorable compared to uh, bigger tornado events that we see. This is it looks like mostly a hail event for us as we move into the next couple of days. So when do these get out of here? Well, let's go back to when they arrive. That's 10, 11 o'clock. They should move out by one. I think by one o'clock, they're east of Oz, east of 49, east of Fort Smith, Fayetteville, Bentonville, and Rogers. They should be moving into central Arkansas by about that time. So I think it looks better. Now, in the wake of this system, you can see, look at the top left. That's blue. That's snow in Kansas and in northwest Oklahoma. There's some cold air behind this. So Tuesday night into Wednesday, it gets cool, but I'm looking at Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This is the national blend of models. So this tells us um, an average of what we would expect to see. And notice, yeah, sure, it's above freezing. It's showing 34, 39-ish across the area. Here's the thing, though. These models do not handle the cold air very well at all. Cold air is dense. It's shallow. The cold air actually hovers down there towards the ground, and the models can't ingest it with the balloon launches. So you have that cold air that's really close to the ground, and oftentimes the magnitude of the cold air can be colder than what the models indicate. So that's one thing that I'm watching and one thing I think could happen for us on Wednesday night into Thursday. If you've already planted a garden, keep an eye on this. I At this point, I don't see it being as cold as the last one that we had when we were in the 20s. I think this is more of uh, some frost that's across the area, but it still could kill some sensitive vegetation. Um, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, I think, is the time frame to watch. Now, the other big story is the next storm system. That gets, gets here over the weekend into early next week, and that could be a problem for us. So for the next uh, week or so, what I thought I'd do, this is the global forecast solution, cloud forecast for cloud percentage, total cloud percentage. This is for Monday. Uh, next Monday at 1 o'clock. So this is when the eclipse is going to be happening. Right now, a lot of the path of totality is showing a close to 100% cloud cover across Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Will that change? It's possible. Look in South Missouri. See how the cloud cover there is at 7%-ish? Well, that was 100% on Friday. So there is the possibility of some change. And being over a week out, I think we'll see some change. Whether or not it changes in our favor and gives us clear skies or cloudy skies remains to be seen. One of the problems I think that we've got going on is we have a very active subtropical jet stream down to the south, and then we have an active polar jet stream. When those two are together, we get this winds diverging or difluence, and that pulls up moisture and it pulls up air. If the air is humid, which it is because of the subtropical jet, you get more cloud cover. So I think we're going to have the possibility of some clouds. It's just going to be the timing of that system that moves through um, over the weekend into early next week as to how much cloud cover we get. Uh, so I wouldn't cancel your plans yet or anything that you've got planned. I've even got something planned. I'm going to keep an eye on it though and see how things track and uh, I'll track it with you. We can do this every morning here for the next week or so leading up to the eclipse. So that's what it looks like now. Again, the cloud cover uh, looks to be pretty high across parts of southwest Arkansas, southeast Oklahoma, and northeast Texas. It lets up a little bit across parts of the Midwest. We'll see how it shakes out. Um, and the forecast can and does change. I mean, after all, I thought it was going to be mostly sunny this weekend. And frankly, we're mostly cloudy. It was wrong. Um, cloud cover and the moisture was a lot thicker than, um, than I anticipated heading into this weekend. We'll see about next weekend. There will be another storm system moving through. Matter of fact, I looked at the long-range model data, and it also looked like there was... <laughs> almost a barrage of storm systems um, about every four or five days or so. But I mean, think about it, guys. We're heading into April. It's pretty common to get a storm system a week here for about the next two months. And each of those storm systems probably does have at least some severe weather risk. So that's what's going on. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter day today. Uh, Easter sunrise was wonderful. At least it didn't rain on Easter, right? Um, and you were able to spend some time with your loved ones. As you head back to work tomorrow, Plan on following the weather throughout the day. There will be that risk of strong to severe storms after dark from north to south lining up and moving through as a line with hail being the dominant threat. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning as we wrap up our weekend and head into the work week.